In this video, we will understand the continuous division method to find the HCF of two numbers. Say we want to find the HCF of 24 and 36. This method is generally used for large numbers. But first, let's try it out with smaller ones. This video is slightly lengthy and I would need you to focus really hard for the next few minutes. As the name says, we have to use division. In the first step, we divide the greater number by the smaller number. Here, 36 is the greater number. So we divide 36 by 24. We are generally used to writing the quotient on top. But in this method, we will write it here. 24 times 1 is 24. And 36 minus 24 is 12. But wait, we're not done yet. The name says continuous division. This was just the first part. We got the quotient as 1 and the first remainder as 12. We call this the first remainder as we get many remainders in this method. In the second step, we divide the smaller number by the first remainder. The smaller number is 24. So we write 24 here. We are dividing the smaller number by the first remainder. 12 times 2 is 24. And 24 minus 24 is 0. We continue this till we get the remainder as 0. And guess what? We already have the HCF. The final divisor becomes the HCF. So here the HCF will be 12. The HCF of 24 and 36 is 12. We divide continuously till we get the remainder as 0. This part was our first division and this was our first remainder. Since it wasn't 0, we performed a second division in which the smaller number became the dividend. And we continued this till we got a zero. But wait, what if we wouldn't have got a zero here? What would be the next dividend? Let's look at another example to understand that. We try to find the HCF of 1044 and 1512. In the first step, we divide the larger number by the smaller number. That is, we divide 1,512 by 1,044. 1,044 times 1 is 1,044. 1 is the largest quotient possible here since 1,044 times 2 is 2,088 which is greater than 1,512. And this minus this is 468. This becomes our first remainder. Since it's not zero, we continue with our division. The smaller number becomes the next dividend and the first remainder becomes the divisor. So we write 1044 here and then we write 468 times 2 equals 936. And this minus this equals 108. Now we completed the second stage and the remainder is not zero. So how do we continue further? Well, it's easy. The first remainder becomes the dividend and the second remainder becomes the divisor. We can write the next step as R1 divided by R2. The first remainder is 468. So we write it here. This is R1 divided by R2. This is the third division we are performing for this example. 108 times 4 equals 432 and 468 minus 432 equals 36. The remainder is still not zero. The next step is simple. It will be R2 divided by R3. This is the second remainder and this is the third remainder. Hence, we write the second remainder, which is 108 here. We're dividing R2 by R3. 36 times 3 is 108. 
and finally we get the remainder as zero. That's where we stop. And the final divisor becomes the HCF. Hence the HCF of 1044 and 1512 is 36. There is another way in which you can look at it. Look at the first example. If the remainder is not zero, the divisor becomes the next dividend. It's the same thing in the second example where we performed four division processes. One, two, three and four. The first remainder was non-zero. 1044 became the next dividend. Then 468 became the next dividend since R2 was not zero. And then 108 became the next dividend and we stopped since the remainder became zero. And for every division process, the remainder is the divisor. And remember, once you get the remainder as zero, the final divisor becomes the HCF. <laughs>